how uh, wonderful it was that Christianity did not go down any of these Gnostic alleys. So many theologians today try to trump up the Gnostic claims. They say that, uh, oh, maybe uh, the Gnostic Gospels have more validity than the four Gospels. This is all rot. Uh, it, right from the start, uh, the church had its opinion of Gnosticism as a really worthless excess. Uh, in fact, the letters of John start talking about Gnosticism, don't they, in the New Testament? And then later on, you have John's disciple, Polycarp of Smyrna, who, who again uh, was the uh, teacher of Irenaeus of Lyon. We have a little intellectual dynasty there. And Irenaeus writes this wonderful book in 180 against heresies, and he targets Gnosticism primarily. And so does Eusebius, the earliest Christian historian. He talks about uh, Simon the Magician, remember him from Acts chapter 8, uh, who was uh, a Gnostic teacher as well. So today, there's a lot of interest in Gnosticism because of the discoveries at Nag Hammadi in Egypt, about the same time the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered, when they found a Gnostic library, and uh, a lot of, in the only one that's even readable uh, is uh, the Thomas Gospel, Gospel of Thomas. And that's just full of all kinds of ridiculous claims. And so I just cannot understand this fascination with this ancient heresy. It really had nothing to do with the core of Christianity, whatever.